if thought could be written like code, could we one day build the mind? Artificial intelligence didn't begin with machines. It began with something older. Curiosity. Come with me on a journey from the old world to the new to see how past has shaped the future of AI. In ancient Greece, Aristotle observed how thoughts connect. He saw patterns in our logic. Let's jump to 1600s where René Descartes walks in and says, I think, therefore I am. He imagined the body as machine and the mind a kind of elegant clockwork. Then came Leibniz, a man ahead of his time. He didn't just think about thought. He imagined a machine that could solve arguments using math. And just like that, the seed of artificial intelligence was planted. In 1940s, something incredible happened. Two scientists, Warren McCulloch and Walter Pitts, asked a bold question. What if brain is just logic, a system of on and off, like a circuit? They imagined neurons not as squishy biology, but as tiny switches, each one firing only if certain rules were met like a light bulb turning on when all the right wires connect. They mapped this idea into something radical, a model of the brain using logic gates, the same kind that power our computers today. This was more than a theory. It was the first artificial neuron, a mathematical sketch of how a thought could form. They weren't building robots, they were building a bridge between the brain and the machine. And with that, the spark of thinking circuits was born. In the 1950s, the world was just beginning to understand the power of machines. And then came a man who saw even further. Alan Turing. He was asking a deeper question. Can machines think? Turing published a paper titled Computing Machinery and Intelligence to explore his own question. He described a thought experiment and he called it the imitation game. A person, a machine and a conversation. If the human couldn't tell which was which, then maybe, just maybe, the machine was thinking. Today we know it as the Turing test, a milestone in the history of artificial intelligence. And just like that, the boundaries between humans and machines begin to blur. Let's go back to 1956 a summer gathering at Dartmouth College. The people in the room, you might recognize a few of them, John McCarthy, Marvin Minsky, Ellen Newell, and Herbert Simon. They rolled up their sleeves and started coding. Programs that could solve math problems, play a game of checkers, even prove logic puzzles. That summer, that's where it all started. That's when AI took its first real birth. After the name was born, artificial intelligence had to learn how to walk. At first, machines just followed instructions, rule by rule, step by step. Everything had to be spelled out line by line. But in 1959, Arthur Samuel, a researcher at IBM, created a program that could play checkers. Not just play, but learn. It played against itself. 
it remembered what worked and over time it got better not because someone told it how but because it figured it out in 1960s a program called elisa came along it was designed to simulate a therapist it didn't understand anything but it could respond it was just pattern matching simple scripts but to many people it felt like the computer understood them things slowed down in the 1970s ai entered its first winter progress didn't stop but it froze for almost a decade then in 1980s another wave of optimism export systems machines that could think like doctors lawyers engineers they made decisions they followed rules they evolved investors but again limitations surfaced they were brittle hard to update expensive to maintain by the late 80s the second winter had begun people started asking is this all ai can do but even in the cold a few kept going quietly patiently because they believed winter was just a pause not the end In the 1990s AI lost the spotlight no buzz just quiet work researchers turned to math and stats they built models decision trees svms bayesian networks ai started working behind the scenes detecting fraud sorting emails making predictions For years AI was groaning in the background until in 2012 a neural network called AlexNet shocked the AI world it didn't just win a global image recognition competition it crushed it it didn't do it with new hardware or new math it did it with layers layers of neurons trained on data running on gpu that moment it changed everything suddenly deep learning wasn't that theory it was winning image recognition speech translation game playing machines weren't just reacting they were seeing they were hearing they were learning at scale the pace picked up from resnet to transformer from alphago to gpt systems that could paint play talk predict and people started asking a new question what else can it do the winters were over the world was paying attention ai wasn't in the shadows anymore it was center stage In 2023 AI began to change again. It wasn't just answering questions anymore, it was taking action. It could plan, break down goals, use tools, adapt to outcomes. This wasn't a chatbot, it was an agent. You gave it a task and it figured out how to do it. Step by step, tool by tool. without being told how like this you ask an agent find and book a podcast studio nearby for thursday afternoon it checks your calendar confirms that you are free searches local studios with the right gear read reviews compares prices and then it shows you two solid options you pick one and it books the slot adds it to your calendar sends you a confirmation email and even calls a ride to get you there on time no micromanaging no prompts just 
the outcome delivered. That's not assistance, that's agency. And it didn't stop there. Agents begin to collaborate. They pass tasks between each other, shared memory, adjusted plans, and they operated like a small, fast-moving team. AutoGPT, Crew AI, Open Agents. These weren't research projects, they were working systems. Working together, thinking ahead, and learning more every time. They are not just responding to us anymore. They are starting to work with us. And they are just getting started. We begin with the question, can machines think? And across decades, we watched answers evolve from logic and language to neurons and networks, from rules to learning to action to agency. We've seen AI rise, fall, adapt and rise again. And today, as we stand here on the edge of something new, a different question emerges. Where is it all going next? How far will intelligence go? What new forms will it take? And what role will you play in shaping it? Because the history of AI isn't finished, it's still being written. Where do you see it going? With this question, let's end this episode here. If you found the story meaningful, give it a like, leave a comment with your thoughts and share it with someone who's curious about AI too. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.